Good morning, guys. Ryan here from Husky Moving, Arlington, Massachusetts, serving the greater Boston area. We are a full-service moving company. We do residential, we do commercial moves, we do handyman jobs, we do artwork mounting, TV mounting, piano moves, hoisting, light plumbing. We do some power washing, we do some light yard work. What else do we do? What have I done recently? Swapped out some toilet seats. Um, I removed a dead raccoon once. If it involves the house, we try to get it done. What I wanted to talk to you guys about this morning was, or is, excuse me, a um, what you need to take into account when you're doing elderly moves. I have a tremendous amount of experience with this. We were very fortunate in the last job that I worked at, the last company I worked for. We had a ton of connections um, in the local assisted living facilities throughout our area. We were there all the time. Uh, I'm going to say on an almost daily basis, I was in and out of a assisted living facility. Um, and we have a ton of them around here because we have a high population in a concentrated area, um, and which was really good. It was a great learning experience for me personally because it teaches you uh, a lot about how you have to, um, how your environment dictates who you have to be uh, in the moment. So that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, a lot of this I consider to be common sense, but it's also stuff that became common sense after years and years and years of going into assisted living facilities. So not none of this is brain surgery. I don't want to act like I'm giving you any, you know, huge tips here, but uh, I have noticed a lot of times when I work with younger guys in particular, when we went into assisted living facilities, they wouldn't change their behavior, meaning the same way that they would act out in a residential normal move dealing with 20 year olds was how these guys would act when they were in an assisted living facility dealing with 75 year old people. And it's not the same environment. It's not even close to the same environment. There's a bunch of things that you need to take into account. Um, so I'm just going to list off some of them that um, I've learned kind of help to uh, keep everyone calm in this situation. Um, so first and foremost, usually if, if possible, um, and the, the customer, more often than not, when you get hired for an assisted living facility job, it's going to be the child of the person who is moving or a relative of that person who's going to contact you. And they're going to say, hey, I need to move my mom. I need to move my uncle, whatever the case may be. Um, so they're usually the ones you're dealing with. Um, but if possible, the first thing I would suggest would be if it's possible to get the actual resident out of the old apartment and out of the new apartment until their items are moved in. I found that it works a lot better. Uh, one of the things that um, can be traumatic for someone, specifically someone who is not in control of anything, like for example, a person in an assisted living facility, you got to keep in mind from their point of view. Oftentimes what's going on is that they're, sometimes their mind is working okay and their body isn't working okay. Sometimes their body isn't working okay and their mind is, work, is working okay. I hope I said that correctly. The point of the story is oftentimes they're at a point in their life that we're all going to get to, which is they're not fully capable of doing what needs to be done, or they're not fully capable of thinking through the entire process as it needs to be thought through. So sometimes it's better to remove them from the situation until we can get all the items into the unit or out of the unit, because that tends to be where the, the trauma happens for the, the resident. Um, and that can be hard to watch for sure. Because they're no longer in a position where they can control their own destiny. They've gotten to a point where people are telling them constantly what to do. In their minds, oftentimes, they're still a fully functioning adult. But they have all these people that are younger than them telling them what's going to happen. How they're going to do it. What time we're going to show up. What's going to move. What's not going to move. Um, and it can be really traumatic. Because people, um, you know, if you put them in, if you put yourself in their position, that, that must be really hard. Like, I've never been in a position before where, like, you know, since I was a child where people were just like, here's what you're doing. Here's what you're doing. Here's what you're doing. Here's what you're doing. And I just have to be like, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, for an adult, that can be really, really hard. And that can, that can send, set, set some people off for sure. Um, I've seen that happen where, um, people got really upset. Uh, people dug in their heels. They very clearly wanted to make it known that they were still an adult and they shouldn't be being treated in a certain way that, you know, in their mind, they were being babied. Um, and that's what we try to avoid. That's what we're trying to avoid. You want to make the process as smooth as possible. You want to understand the dynamics of what's going on with everything. It can be really hard for the resident, obviously, uh, being taken out of one environment and put it into a new environment. 99% of the time, they don't have much say in where they're going. 
Um, that can be really hard for sure. It can be really hard for the the relatives that have to do this and have to make these decisions. You know, they stress about this a lot, and that can be really challenging too. Uh, so you got to be really careful with how you talk to them. Um, some other points to make, and again, a lot of this is just complete common sense, but you really want to like when you get in there, you really want to lower your voice, um, take the tone of your voice, your body language, your energy. You really want to bring it down a lot uh, because that. Um, you know, sometimes you can get away when you're in a residential building and like you're with young people, you can get, have a high energy level. You can be, you know, you, you know, you can be talking loud, you can be listening to music, you can be, you know, joking around and stuff, but that kind of stuff in an assisted living facility probably isn't a good idea. You really want to keep things as calm as humanly possible. Um, you obviously this, again, this is completely common sense, but you always, you would always, um, give the right away to the residents, uh, no matter what's going on. Uh, I don't care what's going on. If you have a, a giant cart full of stuff and there's a resident going down the hallway at one mile an hour, um, you're going to stop what you're doing, pull over, let them go down the hall. Uh, don't go anywhere near them. You know, to you, something that's completely normal, like wheeling a bin box down the hallway um, is a could be a, a big deal to a resident who is uh, not walking well, not moving well. Uh, some, sometimes mentally they're not a hundred percent there anymore. Um, and again, I hope this isn't coming across as disrespectful. We're all going to get there at some point, myself included. I'm closer to that, um, than I'd like to talk about. Um, so it's not meant to be like disrespectful or anything like that. It's just something you got to keep in mind. You know, if you have giant noises, you have giant cartons, you have uh, big boxes, you have giant couches. There's a tendency for older people to just completely stop. And almost get like this deer in the headlights look because to them it's this giant event. Um, and so oftentimes what happens, what I've noticed is if you're moving, for example, a couch down a hallway and there's a couple of residents there and they see you moving a couch, they will literally stop what they're doing and just stare at the couch. No matter where they're located in the hall, whether they're in your way, not in your way, whatever the case may be, it, it can be like it will transfix them almost like I said, like a deer in the headlights and that's not meant to be disrespectful. Um, so you got to be really careful about what you're doing and how you're doing it with the knowledge that your actions are going to potentially have, um, ramifications on how they're acting and, and what their emotions are going to be or what their mental state is going to be. And realistically, this is really what you want to keep in a mind on because in an assisted living facility, you have to operate under the assumption that some of the people, not all the people, but some of the people there are going to have reduced mental um, facilities. And that, again, not meant to be disrespectful. It just is what it is. We're all getting there at some point. Um, but you gotta be really careful about your tone of voice, uh, whether you're yelling or not, you probably wouldn't want to be playing music. Um, you would want to keep everything real quiet and calm. And, you know, the motions would be a little bit like normally when I'm on a job, I'm like kind of a psycho. I'm like going all over the place. I'm like hoisting boxes up and firing stuff all around. You probably wouldn't want to be doing that on an assisting, assisted living facility job. You really want to keep things a little bit calmer. You would purposefully want to like bring down your motions a little bit. Everything would want to be a tiny bit slower. Um, so get the person out of the room if possible. Uh, the other thing I would say, if you want to, you could probably get the relatives out of there too. Because usually what happens with assisting living assisted living facility jobs is more often than not, the rooms are pretty small. Um, and so it typically, it's not like a house where you move like a full bedroom house. You could typically have a person come in and just do a real quick walkthrough and say, here's what's going, here's what's not going. You know, 90% of the time it's everything is going except for, um, there's like a, a toilet seat. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but the toilet seat helpers, uh, there'll be a shower seat, uh, caddy, whatever those things are called. Uh, typically that like the microwave is going to stay with the unit. Obviously the stove is going to stay with the unit, but that's like completely common sense. And then everything else would be going. So once they do the walkthrough, if you wanted to, what I started to do after a while, um, when I realized it was usually better to try to get the people out of there, I, I would talk to the relative and I'd say, Hey, listen, um, I know this is stressful for you guys. I think we got a, a handle on what, what we have to do here. If you want to, if you want to go take your mom, take her for lunch, take her off for a walk, get her out of here. If that, if you feel like that would be easier for her to process everything. So then when she comes back to her new room, she can just walk into a fully formed room as opposed to walking into a situation where people are walking in boxes, walking in lamps, walking in her favorite recliner. She doesn't know where things are getting set up. She's being told where things are going to go and she doesn't have the ability to say, Hey, you know, I don't really want it there. I want it over there. Um, if you can get them out of that situation, that would be great. 
sometimes I'll gently try to prod people to do that and see if they'll get on board. More often than not, they think that's a great idea and they're like, yeah, we want to do that anyway. That's great. I think it's good if we get her out of here. Um, so that's a good idea. What else? Um, you want to, in a perfect world, you want to try to set everything, set everything up. Um, so everything is completely ready to go. Meaning for me to plug in a lamp is nothing, but for an elderly person to get on her hands and knees or his hands and knees and try to get behind a bed to plug in a lamp is brutal. It's brutal. Um, and so things, little small things like that, you want to think that through, like, how can I make this person's life easier? Like, why am I here? Uh, in a perfect world, I'm here so that this person walks in and their room is fully formed. Like everything's ready to go. Clothes are put away. Lamps are turned on and ready to go. Um, stuff is put back in the bedside table. The lamps are put on the bedside table so they can easily grab them while they're sleeping. Uh, things like that are important. Um, what else do you want to do? Usually in assisted living facilities, not, not usually, but oftentimes they'll have storage. You want to ask if anything's going to storage. Um, get that down there for them. Um, if there's any kind of reduced, like severely reduced faculties, like we've had a bunch of jobs before where the person would have like Parkinson's or something like that. Um, you really got to be high. And again, this is complete common sense, but you gotta be really hyper aware of how you're coming across, um, to that person and the energy that you're giving off. Um, and I say this, this really is. It's advice for every job on the planet you're ever going to do. Literally, it's like, it, it's really like life advice. It's like, how, what energy am I giving off? And what am I causing around? Like, oftentimes when I was younger, I would kind of, <clears throat> you know, I would be in a situation and something would happen in the situation. And, and I would, I would think it was like, it was like, uh, circumstances out of my control. Like I didn't understand Like it just happened. It just happened to me. Like something just happened. And then as I got older, I started to realize that a lot of these things that were just happening didn't just happen. They were caused either by my actions or the guy's actions next to me or, you know, you know, an ambulance went down the street and rather than, you know, calming our voices and relaxing, we all got all animated and something happened. Like, you know, once you start taking responsibility for how your words, actions, body language are controlling the situation around you, it's like a complete game changer. So I'd encourage you to think that through. Um, specifically, I'd say it's more necessary to assisted living facility than anywhere else, probably. Um, and then you want to be obviously, um, complete common sense, but you want to you understand that you're a guest there. So if there are, um, facility workers there, you're on their schedule, you're on their time. They have the right of way. Um, if there is the, 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 um, uh, operational manager, I don't know what they call them there, but let's just say the head of the entire building. If they're there, obviously it goes without saying you're on their time, you're on their energy. Um, if they tell you something needs to be done, you do it their way. They tell you you need to go through a certain door, you go through a certain door. They tell you that they're doing maintenance down a certain hall and you can't use it, you don't use that hall. Um, you have to understand that these buildings, or really in any building, that the person who runs the building and the facility managers are the kings of the castle. Um, they have ways that they want things done. Um, and you can either fight it or you can get on board. But I promise you, if you get on board, you'll have a lot better success. Um, so you want to work that through when you get there um, with the people that work there. Stay on their good side. Um, if there's anything that needs to be disposed of, obviously you talk to the building manager, ask them where they would like it brought. Um, you want to try to stay out of elevators and away from elevators during um, lunch and dinner and breakfast times. Um, and that's probably not going to seem like a big deal if you've never done this before, but if you've ever been to an assisted living facility when they're trying to break lunch, um, everyone is trying to get in that elevator at once and you don't want to be trying to bring boxes up or down that elevator. So that would be a good time. Like if you know they're serving lunch at 11 o'clock, you know that like at 1115, everyone's going to be trying to get in the elevator. So that would probably be the time where if you were smart, you would probably want to stop bringing stuff down the elevator purposefully go back up to the unit, maybe spend, you know, 20 minutes wrapping items or wrapping lamps or disassembling furniture or getting stuff ready to go, but not actually bringing it into the elevator and let that elevator clear out, let the um, chaos of that time clear out and then start doing what you're going to do. Now, if, if you do it properly, you're not actually losing any time because all the things I just mentioned you would want to do um, have to be done anyway. So like if you got to break down a bed, it doesn't matter whether you break it down now or break it down a half an hour from now. Um, just do the stuff that's not going to entail going in the elevator at that time. Get all that stuff out of the way. Um, and then you can keep that elevator open for the residents who realistically need it uh, more than you do. Um, 
So guys, I think I'm going to sign off with that. There's probably a thousand things I'm missing, but that's that's the gist of it there. Uh, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you need to get a hold of me, info at Husky Moving is the email address and huskymoving.com is our website. Thank you as always, guys.